Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel for all things ServiceNow. On this video, we're going to see what UI scripts do, where we might use them and how to set one up. Now, this is my sixth video post and I'm aiming to do one a week, um, of course, work and family life permitting. If you haven't done so yet, please hit subscribe to get notified of latest content. A quick shout out to those who have subscribed or added a comment. It's been great to know I've already helped some of you out there in the quest for the ServiceNow configuration utopia. Now, UI scripts, what are they? So, UI scripts are quite similar to script includes and they're, they're not widely known about and not overly used, but they're, they're similar to um, script includes. Well, Script includes are kind of blocks of server-side code accessible to any server-side script. Okay, client scripts if we're using Glide Ajax. Um, UI scripts are blocks of codes that are available to any client-side script on the page on which they load. So for example, we could trigger them from a catalog client script perhaps. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Now, again, with most of my videos, I'm trying to build on previous topics covered um, to show how we can involve our knowledge, our configuration and code um, of ServiceNow. So we're going to use a catalog item I previously created, um, which is this one. And, in a, and again, in a previous video, we did a client script with a Glide Ajax which returns back user information. So for example, if I were to put in Able here, we'll get the information returned back from Able by using our onChange client script, Glide Ajax, to call the script include. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're still gonna use that, but we're gonna put a UI script in the middle. So in between the client script and the script include, we're gonna have a UI script. You might be asking, well, why would I do that? Well, let's do it and let's discuss the benefits of doing that as we go along. OK, so let's head over and start setting this up. So as there are three components, the client script, the UI scripts and the script include, um, we may as well start at the beginning. So let's start the client script. So let's go to uh, item. Remember, we're doing this on the catalog item. And we're going to need to go to or create a new client script. So from one of our last videos, we, we created a variable set with client script within it. The first thing we need to do is make sure that client script, which calls the Glide Ajax, is inactive, which it is. And then we're going to create a new one. So we're going to call this um, UI script test. And we're going to make it an on change. And we're going to change it to that variable there. Now, for this demo, I'm, I'm going to cheat quite a bit, so I'm going to do some copy and pasting, but I'm going to explain as much as I can as we're going through. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to declare a, an array. Fields to update. I'm going to declare a uh, variable for which table we want to interrogate. And then here comes the copy and paste. Apologies, it just makes it a little bit quicker. Within the array that I've created, this is where I'm going to put the fields that I want to um, to obtain, the fields that I want to get off the record. So I'm going to do a glide record query on a script include. So which fields of that glide record do I want to bring back to the client? So I want the title from the sys user table um, or sys user record. I want the department and I want the email. Okay, and I want those three because those are the three values I'm going to set down here set value, email, title, department. So down here, what's this all about here? So this is us invoking the UI script. And we do that by adding in the function name within the UI script, which we haven't created yet, but I'm going to create one called user details. 
So the function is going to be called user details and we're going to pass in new value which is going to be equal to the new value added in the name variable, the fields to update which is our array that we've just declared up here, the table we want to interrogate which in this case is the sys user and then we're going to uh, put in uh, add in a callback function and that callback function is going to accept the answer that's going to come back from the UI script and it's going to populate the details here set value as we had on a previous uh, video so let's save this then what we want to do is move over to our UI script now instead of typing that here I've added them on tabs so that they're readily available and we can flick between them so we can see what's going on so we go to UI scripts we're going to create a new one here we go flicking back already we we'll call it user details in fact we're going to call it user details test because I had previously created one called user details and I don't want there to be a conflict so we're going to call it user details test make it accessible to all and we're going to start creating our function so we're going to create our function we're going to give it the same name as the the API name of the the UI script itself just create our structure for the function there and this is where we're going to put in or pass in the values that are going to come across from the um, client script so from the client script we're passing in new value fields to update the table and the callback and therefore on this side we've also got those de uh, details here okay so whereas before when we did our, our client script to script include we used the glide ajax on the client script we're moving the glide ajax and we're taking it from the client script and moving it to the ui script so let's do that here again i'm going to use a bit of trusty copy and paste there and let's take a look at what i've just done so this is just a glide ajax call but we've just put it in the ui script so we we are invoking the script include of glide ajax details we've got the name of test so we've got a function called test that we're going to call we've got the sysparm user in fact we're going to change that to be sysid since it may be may not be a user we've then got a parameter of table which table are we going to interrogate and then our fields our fields to update so that let me just change that there so we've got our fields to update and then we've got the getm xml answer and we're passing in a callback function and what will happen there that will pass back the values back to our client script so let's save that so we've done our client script we've done our ui script let's head over to the script include this is a script include that we've played with before so what we're going to do here we're going to add a new function called test let me just check function test yes it's called test and we're going to create that here again just creating the structure and I'm going to be naughty again and I'm going to use some copy and paste again I'm just doing this for speed let's have a look the thing with copy and paste is if you're copy and paste copy and pasting incorrect code you can spend quite some time debugging um, when you believe you copied across the right thing I've been there many a times so what we've we got here we've got a new function called test we're um, accepting the parameter of palm fields the um, sys palm fields which we're passing in from here we're getting the sys id the table that we've passed in we're creating an empty object called result and that's going to store our answer that we're going to send back eventually to the client script then what we're going to do here is we're doing a simple glide record query on the sys id and we're going to iterate through the array so this is the field array that we remember we created in the client script 
it's going to, when it gets here it's going to iterate through each value in that array and it's going to go to that glide record and it's going to get the value of that field and add it let's change that and add it to our result object then we're going to json stringify that result object and it's going to pass it all the way back to the client script to then be consumed and used so let's save that okay so we've got our client script calling the ui script and our ui script script is calling the scripting food so let's have a look at what that looks like on our item so now when we select that we would expect that to work however we get a big nice big red error um, and i'm glad that's happened because i can show you there's a there's a couple of gotchas with this that we need to be aware of now because we're using it on the service portal we need to tell the service portal to load our ui script because at the minute it's not loaded in which case it doesn't understand what this is this is not loaded it's not available for invoking so we need to do that and the way we do that is we go over to themes of the portal we find the relevant theme for that portal which i know is Lajola, and we need to add it as a js include so we click new we give it a, a name more useful ui test user details test and we save that okay so now when we reload on reload it will load that UI script which will now be available for us to use ah so that didn't work first time so let's go back and have a quick look and see if we can find anything so here's our client script remember we've got our array we've got uh, um, invoking of the UI script itself nothing obvious there we come over to UI script this is where we've got our glide Ajax and our callback and we've got our script include here now we're not getting our big red ah right okay so here we're getting the parameter syspalm um, sys id and here we're sending in id with a capital i thus proving my point around copy and pasting don't do it okay right so let's go back reload and this time with any luck excellent so that time when we select able we got the information through so I mean, the, the, the thing that you can see here, of course, we've got department, department, a reference field of the user, in which case we've got the sys ID. So we could rectify that by coming back over here and obtaining the display value. Or we could look at another way that we could do that. We could look, if it's a reference field, then get the display value. We could be a bit more intelligent there with our selection. Let's just make sure that change made the, the correct effect excellent there we go okay so that was using a client script ui script and script include so why would i bother doing that why wouldn't i just do what i've done before i've done glide ajax from a client script well if we look at our um, ui script here what we've done is actually quite a powerful thing we've actually done one set of code for a glide ajax where we can send it from the client script very simple with you know perhaps three lines of code we can tell it the fields we want to get we can tell it the table we want to interrogate and then we just simply invoke the UI script so we've only really got three um, lines of code there all our main code is within here itself okay so that's just one one place to administer that code and it makes it a very powerful function that we can use going forward now there are lots of different functions and lots of different ways we can use a UI script I'm just showing you one which I found the simplest to understand and to actually use in a practical sense we can use them for um, just making calculations 
um, you can use them invoked from UI policy you can use them from service portals and widgets themselves so there's a lot of scope to them and it's not heavily documented I'm going to try and do some more videos on this because I think they are um, underrated um, and I understand it takes a little bit of um, getting your head around so I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope you've learned a, a little bit about um, UI scripts and I hope you'll go out there and, and, and give it a go um, you know we all, we all learn best where we're we're playing around trying new things if there's anything you want me to expand on that you've seen today or different topics you want me to cover in future um, just add some comments below um, feedback is much appreciated and as I said before really appreciate the feedback that's coming through so far if you haven't subscribed yet again please do so it really gives me motivation to, to carry on creating these videos for you guys um, again really hope you've enjoyed it and I'll uh, see you all again soon thanks